I screwed up. Yeah, you did. Yep. Okay. So you basically, just... I sent you that item about. Uh, where in the hell is it? Posted it on one of the groups there, and then basically my internet, I haven't been able to get back into it today. Okay. I was going to send it to more people, but I posted it on one group there about the difference between the certificate of live birth and uh, uh, birth certificate. Okay. Okay. The certificate of live birth was the initial document that was sent out by the hospital to send it up to get it recorded. Yes. Now, even though it says certificate of live birth on our document that we're getting, that is a birth certificate. It's not a certificate of live birth. Okay. The certificate of live birth was only the initial filing information. Okay. After that, it is now a validated birth certificate. Oh, okay. They can't issue a passport on a certificate of live birth. Huh. Okay? So it's got to be a birth certificate. And then it's a birth certificate American bank note. Huh. This, you're referring to the uh, uh, note that you made about the Baby Act? No, I'm referring to that document you get from the state when you go to the Bureau of Vital Statistics. No, I'm, I mean you, what you said you posted. Yeah, I posted it up there. I took it from that one uh, uh, legal department, okay? And basically I got it because I was looking for, uh, I found it on the site that was covering uh, Baby Act. Right, okay. Yeah, you gave us a, a nice quote about the Baby Act. Yeah, and it's in pretty much all the dictionaries. Okay. I, I was just checking to make sure I had what you said you posted. I'd like to ask a question about the um, 1099A. It's the, it says UI commercial vessel, and then it has a number. Is that our number on our birth certificate at the top? What is that number? Um, which one? The 1099A, it, it says a what did, what? Okay, there are several 1099As. What is the title of the document that you're looking at? Actually, is it the invoice or is it the bill set off? What is the title of that document? Oh, goodness. It says, um, well, acquisition or abandonment of secured property. No, that's what's on the form. Okay, I don't know. I can't tell. The name of the file. Is it the name of the file that's in your folder. Oh, I, I printed it out. I don't have the file. I printed it. It says. Does it have the Puerto? Does it have the Puerto Rico address in the upper left? It has Dave um, Patrick Divine University of Iowa Healthcare. That is a bill set off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what is that the, is one that you would go to, like the hospital or to the court or somebody like that, to do the set-off. You borrow the debt from them, then you turn around and give them or release the credit to them. Okay? Now, you have your Social Security number in the first EIN, or uh, federal identification number. Then you have your estate EIN in the second block. Okay? Then you have your address. Then down below, that is the account number that's on the receipt from the hospital, oh. from the court case, whatever. I see. Okay. Thank you. Please, people, think a little, okay? I mean, I'm getting burned out on this. I was hoping that you people would wake up. Well, you know, a lot of times when you, when you read a commercial vessel, you know. Yeah, and stop reading all their garbage 
and start thinking for yourself. What makes sense? That's the problem. What makes sense to you? I had to make sense to me to come up with these numbers. If you don't like the way I've come up with them, change them. But make it make sense to you in the process. You'd be surprised how many receipts you paid out of your back pocket. All your utility bills for the for the year. Okay? You could turn around and send those all in and do a draw against your uh, dead man's account down there in Puerto Rico. You don't have to do a Minnesota 220 process. You are basically acknowledged when you get that certificate or that uh, birth certificate. As a banknote, they ain't going to give that banknote out to any Joe Blow. You had to prove yourself to be able to get the damn thing. Now, it's issued out under state seal. Even the county has the governor of the state. Okay? And basically the state registrar or the county registrar, whoever, on there. They've given you your acknowledgement that 220 is only for another corporate function out there. None of those codes can apply to the living person in this process when we're coming in to claim our assets. I don't know whether that makes any sense to you or not. Yes. It does to me, but I'm I'm totally out in left field there. Used to be a left fielder too. Of course I used to play all positions at one time. Hmm. So I'm a jack of all trades. Well I'll work left field for a while too. I'm pulling together all, all my utilities. If I have several invoices, I should make a, a spreadsheet for that and endorse the back of the spreadsheet or endorse each invoice or do both. If you've got the receipt for the month, attach it, endorse it, add okay. them all up, make an invoice, and then put them all together and send them all in. Well, I don't have receipts. I paid them all online, and I could go online and get a statement. You can get a copy of the receipts online, okay? I will do that. Okay. That makes or it you easy. Can give it, you can get a total invoice. should be able to get a total invoice from them for what you paid for the year. Okay. I'll ask, I'll ask that. I'll, well, I'll move, I'll move with the online ones to get it done quicker. There's okay. many different ways to work this thing through. Yep. The Baby Act is very big when you understand what that means. Okay? Your initial contractor with your birth certificate utilizing it by the corporations, by your godparents or whatever, guardians, was done when you were underage. Mm -hmm. Also, the Social Security was signed when you were underage. Now, that is infancy, okay, Protection. Protection of the infant. Well, you haven't grown up. This country is a country of babies out on the lawn. 
Babylon. Nobody's grown up and taken on the full responsibility for their own monetary processes. Patrick, uh, Rule 220 says that once you've completed the process, you've reached, you've reached the age of majority. You've reached the age of majority a lot of other ways out here. Oh, heck yeah. Okay? Definitely. But Definitely. Why, why would you have to go to Minnesota? Why don't you have a Washington 220 form? Why don't you, you have don't, an Iowa you don't, you, don't need, form? you don't need to go to Minnesota Rule 220. It's just giving you a process. It's just telling you what you can do. Yeah, but why is there now here in the all these other states? I mean, why just like every state constitution. Minnesota? Every state constitution um, doesn't say the same thing. I mean, it's supposed to say the same thing, but they use different words. We know how they work. They'll have something that they're supposed to put out there in front of you, but they won't do it, so they'll put it somewhere. But the thing is, it's right in the Constitution already. This is just like what I wrote to this one organization, okay, about term limits, okay? They went and, spent and got a whole bunch of money from people, and they she got it on the ballots in I don't know how many different states about term limits for senators and congressmen. Yep. I mean, total idiocy, okay? They went to the Supreme Court to try and get the thing overruled, okay? The, the states were, uh, the, or the government was trying to uh, prevent them from doing that. Well, yeah, they lost in the Supreme Court because they were arguing the wrong damn thing. Why would you need to have a Rule 220 in any state constitution when it is right in the U.S. Constitution that says when you are 25, you are a free man. Patch, no one's saying you need Rule 220. No one is saying that. Throw Rule 220 out the window. It's just yeah. the process. That's it. You keep calling yeah. it Rule 220. It's, that's just something that's just an analogy we use analogies a lot it's just yeah, an and analogy. you don't have to we go know, to the we know there are different jurisdictions i mean yeah. we there are a lot of process that processes that we do to just try mm -hmm. to um like we talk about court if i take just, if i take a document in the court a good lawyer can say oh well we don't know if that's authentic okay now we got to do a continuation because now i got to go authenticate this document or you can stand on your square you can you know so you can argue which creditors don't do or you could just come in with the thing already authenticated, and then they can't say anything. Well, basically, you're not even supposed to be in that court, okay? Right. You know, your paperwork precedes you. I get that. Yeah, but, but see, you don't have to put they any paperwork play in when you're not supposed to be there. Why would you put paperwork into a court when you're not even supposed to be in that court? So how are we going? So we get our. How are we going to get our assets? We talking about Puerto Rico, right? Puerto Rico. Uh, a report we go came right out Puerto to Puerto Rico. We put right. our. That, but that a, is a, a report came listen. out on Puerto Rico that they filed bankruptcy. I'm just throwing that out that there, not to the say that country. that's a bad thing. That that's is not the a bad country. thing. Right, right. That is the, the country. That is not our account. Right. This guy's a trustee in the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Okay, over a bankrupt corporation. Right. That's the country, he is, the corporation. Okay. Yeah. He is basically doing a dual function, just like right. the Secretary of the Treasury here in this country is working right. with the IMF. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. That's the problem. And then, uh, but it's right in, basically, you had to be a landowner to be able to vote at the age of 21, okay? That is per the Constitution, it's 21, or basically uh, the, wherever it is in there about the age of 21, okay? As a representative of a man, you had to be a freed man, 
That means you could not be a debtor. Now, they polluted the whole damn scenario in the process out here of getting everybody to be a debtor and using insurance and everything. But all you have to do is stand by the Bible when you go into court. They can't they don't have jurisdiction over you in that court. They really don't. No, I mean I know that, you know, and mm-hmm. it's depending on which article of court I go to, you know, that's just what I'm what I'm having to deal with. But all I'm saying is I want to get my assets how am I going to get that? You take a 1099A, okay, and you get your receipts, or you take that birth certificate dash American bank note, or whatever type note it is. It says right on that uh, birth certificate what it is. Okay? It's a, it's a bank I mean, note I know what of it some is. sort. And they yeah, get the sure. post office. The post office is the one that is responsible for printing all paper instruments. And then you send it out under certified mail. Now that is a certified mail banking instrument. And they have three days to process it. And you're Basically, surrender. You're coming in and you're borrowing the debt, and then you're surrendering the credits to cancel the debt and obtain the credits back that you paid out of your back pocket. And how will you obtain those credits? Because you paid out of your no, no, back no, no. pocket, and how, when you how, release how. the credits from your a uh, dead man's account to compensate you, they will either send the funds back to you by a direct deposit into your debit card, your checking account or whatever, or a treasury check directly to you. Now, one of the other things is you might want to do a 10 night or uh, a W. 8-B-E-N or W-8-B-E-N-E. I think it's the W-8-B-E-N because you're an individual. But where does that W-8-B-E-N go? It goes to Austin, Texas because you are a foreign entity compared to the United States Corporation. All the income tax is really referring to the United States Corporation. You are not a resident or an inhabitant of the United States Corporation. You are domiciled in the United States of America. You are an American citizen. And let any court prove you wrong on that bullshit. You throw it down out there, and basically they will slip and fall right on their ass if they try and come after you through that shit. You become a shit slinger. <laughs> come on, I'm trying to get you to laugh a little here, guys. I hear you, man. <laughs> I mean, everybody takes this so damn seriously. Got to have a little ludicrousy in it because this is so damn ludicrousy. Um, well, you know, I, you know, we've been doing those, but uh, you know, I've been looking at how. You know, the banks, they're learning about those, too. Like, they actually know what they are. They know who they are, too, you know. Just sending things to the right people, you know, and, and trying to collect on these assets is, is the real key because 
you know, you don't want to have to keep dealing with, you know, discharging these utility bills if you have everything in your possession. Right. You do the 1099A, and they see you set it off. And they see they, uh, uh, you can send it in and uh, uh, release so much credit for them for the year. Here, I'll release this much credit for the rest of the year. I'll figure out 12 months worth. Okay, if you need more, I'll give it to you. You don't have to pay it back to the Treasury. That's all you're doing. They are utilizing, they're borrowing our, against our letter of credit. They're using, they're a usury process of using our assets in the bonds that they're getting the payment from. See, they need money to operate with. They have to borrow it. Well, we, we give them the credit so that they can go and borrow because that corporation has nothing. So we have to give them the, the collateral so that they can go to the bank and borrow some money. Then they write the bonds against the collateral that's put up there. And the bonds are making uh, money back, both for the bank and for the company. The company turns around and uh, is uh, has the funds there to pay the utility bill for you in the process. You just have to release it to them, the credits. Instead of them sending it back down to Puerto Rico, you release it to them so that they don't have to send it back. Then it offsets their expenses for the year. But you need to get these receipts down to Puerto Rico so that Puerto Rico, the IRS down there, knows whether that utility company has gotten paid or not. That's the same way at the courts. You need to get these receipts down to Puerto Rico. Then you borrow the funds from your account, even though they may not have been put back into your account yet, but you can borrow from your account in the interim. Then the IRS and the Secretary of Treasury down in Puerto Rico the bankruptcy trustee will go and make sure that that utility company puts the funds into your account if they aren't already there. That's what has to happen. Hey, Patrick, on the last call, you spoke on the, uh, the post office. You know, um, I think you were kind of going back into the information of it, um, you know, doing the withdrawals and the deposits via the um, post office. Is that where you were going when you talked about that the last time? Well, basically, like I said earlier, this birth certificate, okay, is on American banknote paper. The post office, not the postal office, but the post office is the one that basically is responsible for printing all uh, government uh, money. And a banknote is money. You just have to put the value on the back of that certificate or that birth certificate, American bank note, put the value on it, and then process it through the system. But see, we've been calling it a certificate of live birth. Wrong name.
even though it says it on there, it's not. And that's what that one definition or uh, wording that I posted up there on uh, that one group there. I don't know how many I got it on. I may have only gotten it on one. Uh, you have it on your my Pat- damn. You have it on your Patrick dash dash dash. Well, post it on everything out there then. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll check the other groups. Just, uh, just uh, well, post it on the We the People and everything else. I'll do. Put that. it as a document. Stick it in uh, e-concurrence. We'll do that. I'll convert it to a doc file. And do that. Yeah, basically same thing with the Baby Act. Same thing with Babylon. Okay, Babylon is nothing but a baby lawn, a lawn full of babies, infants. That was a correlation of the munchkins in the Wizard of Oz. Hmm. The little people. Well, you're little people. You're little in mentality. You're still babies. I don't know how many movies that's re- sort of referenced in. But yeah, you're protected by the Baby Act. Even as an adult, you can use that baby act to your benefit. Statute of limitations does not apply. Read the definition. Patrick. Yeah. That baby act um, thing really worked. My daughter Courtney had an IRS debt with IRS for $5,402. I took the um, live birth certificate down there, and they wiped the debt out, and she got a tax return back for the past two years. She got all her money back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they took the levy off of her, too. So that baby act do work 21.7.1322, something like that, I said. Yeah. And then also, basically, by having your Bible and uh, your baptismal certificate in there, uh, showing you you're a living entity. They can only tax the fiction. Right. And then also uh, the other uh, uh, protection, okay? You guys might, if you want to help Rod class, wake him up. I mean, talk about a baby. There's a baby right there uh, trying to fight the system. Uh, Tell him about this uh, confession and avoidance and then the baby act. And then also about taking his Bible in and about his baptismal certificate. Tell him to stop fighting the damn system and understand the system. He loves the fight. Yeah. That's the way a lot of these people do. All the people that are on Angel Start Show, that's why they won't have me on there too much more anymore because I won't fight them. Uh-huh. I'll chew their ass out, but I won't get into their damn, try and get into their court systems and fight anymore. <laughs> You're fighting with dead entities, okay? That's stupid. You can go out there and beat a dead body until kingdom come. You ain't going to get anything out of it. You guys talked about the Baby Act, and is that is that part of a U.S. code or what? It's, I heard it's in the dictionary. Look it up. It's in Blacks and Valentines, both. All right. That's the first I've heard of it. 
No, he's been talking about it. Yeah, he, he also posted it in the Patrick Devine group. But I will. Yeah, I think I'd mentioned it a year or two ago too. Yeah, talk yeah. about it. I didn't I understand you, Tom. You said something about you posted it where? He posted it in the Patrick Devine group at 4:06 on Monday. Uh, I will I will turn it into a doc file and uh, get it up on Yahoo. 4:06 Monday. Okay, just recently. Okay. Yeah, it's got the link for the uh, law system that's there, but uh, was referenced. Okay, right, and then it. he uh, it's 4:58 on Monday in the uh, Patrick Klein group. Yeah, and then that was the Baby Act, and then basically later on I put that other uh, statement off the same uh, off this other website that had that Baby Act listed on it too. There about what is the difference between the certificate of live birth and a birth certificate? Okay. You've got to stop using the term certificate of live birth. That's done. It's over. What you get now is not a certificate of live birth. It's really a birth certificate. And it's a birth certificate dash in most cases, American bank note. So it's a negotiable instrument as soon as you apply a value to the back of it. And it's your inheritance. That's your birthing inheritance negotiable instrument. And they have to process it. But they also have to process all of the receipts when you send them in. as a draw against your dead man's account. You surrender the receipts so you can't use them again, okay? And nobody else can use them. And then you get compensated for what you paid out of your back pocket if you did not set the bill off to begin with. So you got two options. You can either set the bill off by doing a 1099A, borrowing the debt from the company, and then releasing the bill back to them, the credits back to them as a negative value, and that sets it off. You don't owe, so you mark the box, you do not have to pay this back. You only had to make one payment. Which payment do you want to make? The set off. The one out of your account or the one uh, that they owe back to you by releasing it? Pretty simple, really, when it comes down to it. And then all 1099 Bs and Cs they have to take care of. And then we get an A on our report card because that's all we deal with is A's. Huh. You want to be an A student? Be an A student. So for funds, we can uh, still endorse our birth certificate as a draw? Uh, like yes. We, yes, like we've done before. Okay. 
And we don't send that to Puerto Rico? Do we still send it to Puerto Rico? I would send it to Puerto Rico for right now, okay? okay. But I, Thank you. You get some funds going, and basically then you're going to start freeing yourself up, and uh, basically then you'll start getting some people starting to talk to you in the process when you start doing the thing right. Okay. Got it. But, Patrick, if you're doing it for a light bill, you only can send one in per year. Huh? If you're doing a 1099A for a light bill, you can only set it off one per year. You can. Okay. You can put it in for so much value. See, that's what Lawrence did down in uh, South Carolina. He put an extra 1000 or so down on the uh, water bill. I think he owed something like seventeen hundred dollars. Well, he made it out for twenty seven hundred dollars. And then released that much credit to them. So now he has a credit on the books. So you could do the same thing. You can release more credits. You can figure out, well, basically, this is one twelfth of the year. I'll multiply this times 12, and I'll go ahead and this first 1099A, I'll give them, uh, release that much credit. Now they've got to put that onto my account with the credits there, negative credits, and then as soon as the bill comes in for the next month, they basically wipe that much out. Now you've still got so many negative credits sitting there. Just like what I did when I went up to... Uh, the gas company, and I gave them three thousand dollars. It was three thousand negative credits. They came down and filled up the gas bill. Uh, they filled up my LP and they brought down six loads of rock. I still got eight hundred, a negative eight hundred credits on the account. Did you use a ten ninety nine with that? No. I paid out of my back pocket. Now, see, I could turn around and do a 1099A, taking the receipt that they gave me, surrender that to the Secretary of the Treasury down in Puerto Rico, and get the $2,200 back from my dead man's account. Just like what I did with my car. I paid twenty five hundred or twenty five thousand and fifty dollars. I've got a receipt for it. Now I'm gonna do I didn't do a ten ninety nine A there. Now I'm gonna do a ten ninety nine A and borrow that from my dead man's account. Surrender the receipt to them and basically then I can't put a claim in against that company against that receipt anymore. It's a done deal. I owe that car outright. I'm totally responsible for anything that happens to it. That's the way we're supposed to be operating in this country. We're supposed to be responsible for all of our actions. Yeah. No insurance. No warranties. When you when you endorse the back of your birth certificate, do you put um, a... Whatever you point? want. i put enough examples out there over the years of doing this. I've told you we need to... We come in and we do the endorsement as the individual banker. Do we do it on we, the original or a copy? What do you think? <laughs> well, it's cheaper to do it on the copy. What do you really think? Probably the which one is the which one is the value? Which one has value to it? A copy or the original? The original. Okay. You don't need to go any further. Come on. Think these things through logically. I'm gonna send Mr. Spock down to see some of you people. 
you know, put that pincher or whatever the hell he used to do to numbnize people. I, I had a Latin teacher that would do that pinch, and she used to drop uh, two 300-pound football players right down to her knees when she got a hold of her, uh, that muscle right there in the neck and just pinched. She had a set of tongs that would pinch the hell out of things. When we endorse the birth certificate, do we put the negative credit on it now? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. It's plot. You're borrowing the debt. Now you've got to release the credits from the account, and that is in their world, in the dead world, credits are negative. Right. Okay, just check. Okay? Debt is positive. We've gone over this about the last two or three weeks. Right. It wasn't on the previous examples, though. I just wanted to make sure. Well, those previous examples were, what, about two or three months old? Yeah, yeah, around that area. That's the last time we did yeah. So we have to update that with our new technology. Okay. Now, does anybody still feel that you need to go and have an authenticity or a authentication? process done yes why because I'm, I'm a, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know no I give me a reason it. why because I hear it and I believe it and I'm a sucker I never thought you'd have to do it and everybody's talking about doing it that's like saying you got to Go make an authenticity out of your own check because they're giving you the coupon. You've already identified yourself. You've got a, you got, you gave them a notarized application to get the coupon. What else do you need? Well, I got a suggestion or possibility on that. Yeah, go ahead. That's why this is open for discussion here. Come on. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, basically, if you're, if one's going to, run their own court of record, wouldn't they need to establish some facts of at least two or three more witnesses? And yeah. so by authenticating it, you would you um, you get those facts of the signatures in place to establish at least the facts in your court of record by authenticating. At least that's the logic from my opinion. So, in other words, if one doesn't have at least two or three witnesses, then do they have any facts to make any claim from? Okay. You've got two That's people that signed a question the for you. They signed got a the question person. for you. Okay, the question yeah. is, who is a valid witness out here that you are who you are? We are. Me, my, me, myself, and I. That's it. You are the only one that knows that you are you. I don't know. None of these others know who you are. None of those notary republics, they're just notarizing a picture. That's all that they're notarizing. They can't notarize the living. They and can't. John Kerry, John Kerry doesn't know you at all. Right. But he knows a document. That's a dead instrument. What's he notarizing? He's notarizing the dead. 
You're the living. You had to get that certificate of live birth. Okay? Only you could get that. But you had to have a living representative, one of your living persons, come in there to get that certificate for you. Okay? Patrick Devine had to come in and get the birth certificate for Patrick. <coughs> but he didn't have to get it off and authorized because it's already authorized when it was placed on file. When it was given that registration number. That registration number is the authenticity number. That's the way I'm looking at it. I'd like you guys to try and prove me wrong if I'm wrong. But I don't think we need to go any go through any more hoops. It wasn't supposed to be this damn complicated. Any comments? I have a question. Okay. Hi, Patrick Speaker. Is there a difference between a church notary and a bank notary? No, they're both dead men. They're both operating with the last name. They're going to sign with the last name. Yeah, so they're dead. They're a corporate fiction. Okay. Why do we need a notary? The witness. To what? To what's in the envelope or what's being sent. That's the paper. Okay. How many notaries are on that mortgage that you sign? How many notaries are on that utility contract you sign? Okay? Yeah. How many notaries are there? Zero. Zero. That means you must have had some authority all along. How many notaries are on your Social Security card? Zero. (laughs) God damn it. The most important signature out there, your signature for a letter of credit, you have no notary. So why do you need to go and get a notary for all this other garbage? Because you're playing their damn game. You're letting them mind control you, MK alter you. You know what's interesting? I have something to say. A notary, I noticed that on the form, you put your last name and then your first name on the actual application. But when people get it notarized, they don't notarize it with their last name first. They do it the opposite, which is interesting because it's supposed to be exactly the way you fill out the form. Yeah. I mean, you take your driver's license and you give that to them as your identification. The identification is last name first, then first and middle name. 
So basically, they're signing something fraudulently. Exactly. Exactly. Because they really don't know what they're doing either. Okay. They've just been taught that that's, well, that you just need to look at this. But they never looked at the damn thing. They never understand, uh, and I don't know how many people I've said this to, uh, I'm not dead. I don't have a last name. Are you dead? I think you're alive. Why are you running around with a last name? Only people that go to the cemetery and get buried have a last name. I don't think you're dead. And then they think about it for a second, and then basically they go right back to their uh, infancy stage and say, well, basically, I'm going to be in the baby lawn. <laughs> and that's what Daniel was running them problems with, was everybody there in the Jewish uh, system was operating in the baby lawn. And basically, that was the second Babylon. We're in the third Babylon right now. The baby lawn. The infancy system. Does that make sense to you people? Yep. Makes me sick. To see how many of these educated people running around here are still wearing diapers. They can they can beat up the the baby next to them and basically they they're really something. You know you can challenge all the notary signatures because they're all false if they didn't do it correctly. Right, but you don't even need them. Okay, why are you? No, I was just. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. You can challenge anything in these courts because basically the courts do not have jurisdiction over the living. Like I said before, years ago, basically I even told them in the court that, I sat outside and said, I don't want to go into the cemetery today. Because basically, what do you got? You got the little swinging gates there, just like in a cemetery. They pull them open for you to come into the cemetery. And then you go and find your your family plot, and you sit your ass down at the family plot table. That's all it is. You're going in on a visitation. Read the definition about visitation. I've gone over these words for about the last... Uh, five years throughout the dictionary, numerous words that all come into play in this whole process. And some of them we come right back to uh, the same words that I was using back in 2010 and 11. In some cases, looking at it from a slightly different, better perspective on the definition of the word. Got a question for you, Patrick. Yeah. So how will the dead know that we're alive? When you put your Bible down and when you put your baptismal record down in front of them, okay? See, a baptismal record, okay? A dead person cannot receive a baptism. Okay? The dead... Okay, how many movies you watched out there about the vampires? The well, dead, not, yeah, the dead cannot up. handle a cross or a sacred book, the Bible. Hmm. Hmm. Only the living can handle that. Is 
And that brings up a whole nother reality to this matrix we're in that it would seem then that there's a majority of what appears to be people, but they're not actually really real people. They're more like machines. Yeah, they're uh, babies. Okay. No, not, not they're they're not even they're not the same as the living. They just appear yeah, to be yeah. living, but they're really not. But so, see, a, yeah, a baby is classified in a different capacity than a uh, adult. Okay, and that's why they want to treat you as a baby. Okay, and then they are the guardian of the baby in the process. Okay, they're not really dealing with the dead, but they're dealing with the baby, the infant. Okay, and they can take all undue advantages of that. That's why uh, out here in government, there is so many, and even in uh, a lot of the religious, pedophiles videos or whatever the hell that's called, child molesters, because they've been doing it for all this time against everybody in this country. The pedophiles. Pedophiles, or whatever, yeah. Incest. They don't want to have intercourse. They want to have incest. Commerce with an infant. Because the infant can't fight back in those cases. That an adult can say no, and then their ass is in trouble. Then it's rape. Patrick, when we sign a document like the 1099 and we put our last name first and then our first name, are we signing as a dead person? Where do you sign on that document? My address. Oh, your address is your signature? No. On the 1099... There is no signature on the 1099A. Oh, I was looking at the sample. It says last name first and then Morta, Morta Main Vessel, care of Secretary of Treasury, Puerto Rico. Yeah, but it's all printed. You never sign anything on that document. Oh, that's the difference. So, okay, gotcha. The only document that you would sign that goes into the IRS is a 1096 form, and you're signing it on the 1096 form as your individual banker. And you would be signing there, in my case, Patrick Devine. Okay? And printing it? Huh? You would print it? No, I'd sign it. Okay. I'm signing for him, okay? He's my right-hand person, my son of God, and I'm the God. Just like the Bible says, both in the New Testament and Old Testament, ye are gods. When you're done, I have a question. I'm just kind of mixed up on how this last name stuff works because we always sign our... Okay, the last name on the Social Security account, okay, and any account that is in their corporate structure. This is their accounts in their system, not our persons. When we create our EIN, they are our accounts over in our private bank. In our private bank, they are first name, middle name, last name. Now, in the corporate world, in their world, on the other side of the looking glass, 
they operate with last name first, then first name, then middle name. Because it's a dead man's account in their system. Just like in the Pirates of the Caribbean. I have a question when you're done, sir. Okay. Well, you 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 satisfied with the answer that I gave you? Yes, I was just trying to figure out how this last name enters into all our documents. Like my like when I sign my check, I just say my first name and then my last name as signature. And so that's different. You are signing as the authorized representative for that account. But when right. they go when they take that account, even though it appears as uh, like Mary Smith up on the check, the account number, really when they go into the back room, it's Smith Mary in their accounting book. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, see, you don't see that accounting book. Just like right. the Social Security card. So it's really your last name first, then your first name down there at the treasury in the dead man's account because it's got to show that it's a dead man. Okay. Are you ready for my question, sir? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, once I put a value on the back of my birth certificate and it's authenticated and yada, 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 where do I deposit that? In, in my bank account or my trust or... You send it with a 1099A down to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Oh, you have hard. to make it a negative value on a 1099A. You're going to borrow that much debt. Okay, that's a positive. And you have to do a 1099A with these items. Because everything out here is really about tax. And it's what you're doing is you're taxing the dead. Only the dead can be taxed. Well, I wish I so it's a dead it. tax. All, and this goes all the way back to Pharaoh, okay? Back in the book of Joshua. Pennies on the eyeball. Huh? With the pennies on the eyeball? No. The 200 shackles or whatever to bury a dead person into the cemetery. Read chapter 14 in the book of Joshua. That's why that book was never put in the Bible. Because it tells you exactly what's going on here. What book are you referring to? The book of Joshua. Okay, we posted this up on the site. It's up there. Now? Yes. It's been up there for, I don't know how many, year, two years? Tom? I know it's up there on both e concurrent and uh, uh the We the People site. It's about 18 months. Yeah, almost I'll, two years. I could be wrong, yeah. It could be two years, too. Yeah. But that chapter 14 basically says it right there. All about the first Pharaoh coming into Egypt. And he sat at the gate. He got 30... Uh, basically a uh, henchman and sat at the gate and said, basically this is a dec decree from the king that you have to pay 200 shackles to bury your dead. Well, the people only met with the king once a year, so they had to wait a whole year before uh, the king came out to see him again, and then they all complained. And then the guy loaded up all his mules and everything with all the uh, money that he'd obtained, and made a presentment to the king. And the king was so overwhelmed by getting all that that he made uh, that guy the first pharaoh of Egypt. 
because he was taxing the dead to be buried. Okay, any other questions? We mentioned that a city digital library to Puerto Rico, do we endorse the back earning? Okay, correction. It is not a certificate of live birth. We corrected that at the beginning of this call. I was late. Okay, that instrument that went from the hospital to the county recorder and then on up to the Bureau of Biostatistics, that was a instrument that was called a certificate of live birth for recording, okay? Now, after it's recorded and given the number, it is now a birth certificate. Mm. And now, uh, since, uh, I don't know, in the mid-70s or so, when they started printing these things out on banknote paper, and in most cases it's American banknote paper, it is now a negotiable instrument. It is a birth certificate out dash American banknote, and all you have to do is assign the value to that on the back, put a 1099A with it, borrow the debt, and then cancel the credits with a negative value on the back of that instrument. And send that down to Puerto Rico or over to Philadelphia after we get our accounts totally shut down. You're going to shut down the accounts first? No. You can go to Puerto Rico right now and take all your receipts and everything else and get reimbursed oh, yeah. and start getting some funds, and then you can start thinking a little clearer. <laughs> Stop worrying about all the damn debt money. Once you get one of these things through, you'll see how damn simple it is. Yeah. What about you send them out certified mail. So now that is a certified bank uh, deposit or instrument, processing instrument. And you're the certifier in most cases. You're the postmaster. And when we send in these endorsed birth certificates, uh, the 1099A is marked no pay, right? The recipient yeah, does not mark pay. what? The recipient does not pay the debt. It's marked no pay. Right. Um, you don't have to pay it back. The right. borrower does not have to pay it back. Right. Just wanted to make sure. Thought it through. Well, think it through. I did. Okay. I just wanted to check. When you endorse a bill and send it back, you're not going to pay out of your back pocket. If you don't mark that box, you've got to pay out of your back pocket. Okay. That's what that's saying. If you don't mark that, you're going to have to pay out of your back pocket. And see, that's where some people have messed up in these IRS forms. In some cases, even with the 1099 OIDs, and we shouldn't be doing any of these because we should only be out here trying to get straight A's. Luckily, they don't have a 1099F. Because <laughs> I probably would have had a bunch of those by now. Okay. Based upon my schooling.
And then, see, you also stand under Roman law out here in all your court cases. You stand under the real law. And that's what, basically, the Bible is basically the modern version of the Ten Commandments in the Roman time frame. Cast in iron. That is what Christ is all about. Is the law, the Moses law, cast in iron. So when you say, I'm a citizen of Christ, you're saying, I'm a citizen in the real law or the Roman law at this time frame. Any other questions, comments, or anything? Any questions? No. Well, as far as the authenticating the records, wouldn't that at least um, provide more credibility to your facts? To who? Well, in the case of, for example, you write $100 million on the back of your bank note. They're not going to write $100 million, okay? It's 11, it's 11 million, right? Oh, yeah, 11 million, whatever. Right? Just go and maybe get a couple hundred thousand or so, okay? You can always go and get another one, okay? At $20 yeah. or so for a, a birth certificate, okay? Oh, yeah. You You're not going to be running around with a million dollars in your back pocket, okay? <laughs> but you might be able to run around with a couple hundred thousand yeah. stuffed in your pockets. That gives you, you enough to go out and buy a car and basically put some in the trunk. <laughs> That's a great idea. Come on, people, think about this, okay? Once you get this thing through and basically you get it processed, why would you want to pull any more out right away until you get yourself set up to where you can protect it? I'll pump the up. That's why I said, basically one of the simplest things you ought to be able to get done right away is to take your receipts. That shows them then that you are you understand what's going on because you're now canceling out the debt that is out there. And you're making sure that that corporation has paid their taxes to the treasury. And that's one of the key things there is nobody has been reporting these utility companies and everything else to make sure that they're all paying their taxes. See, that's what Enron wasn't doing. That's why he went to jail, because he wasn't paying his taxes. Okay, I guess too much silence here, so I guess there's nobody wants to say anything. I'm just thinking it, thinking it. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Well, if you guys want to go ahead and talk, 
I'll get off the line here, and you guys can continue talking, okay? I'll catch you guys later. Thank you, Patrick. Yep. Good night. All right. Good night. Arrivederci. Is Malik on the line? Pardon? Uh, um, Malik. Is Malik on the line? He's asleep. <laughs> well, I guess so. This, this has been really been very helpful to me. I, I came in late, so my question is, did you get a chance to talk about the Minnesota 220? And, and yes. how to file that for authentication. And you won't like it. I won't. No. He said not to. He said not to do it. Right. That's when I came in. Right. He said it tells you how to do it right in the Minnesota 220. Yeah. 